Hey, I'm Alice. Bright Sons, I'm Jack. This week, we are going to Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. A couple of our friends joined us on this trip, and the main purpose in planning this October 2020 trip, which was actually supposed to happen in April until COVID happened, was to take our friends to Galaxy's Edge, which they had never seen, and for all of us to get a chance to check out Rise of the Resistance, which had opened since our last visit to Hollywood Studios. Yeah, these friends are Star Wars fans. One of them is a lifelong fan, and his wife is a newer fan, just kind of getting into Star Wars in recent years. Alice and I had been to Galaxy's Edge before, so we're excited to see our friends' reaction to the land, and we're also excited for all of us to experience Rise of the Resistance together for the first time. We are here in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and we have brought a couple of our friends. This is CJ hey. and Melissa. <laughs> smile with your eyes, I can't see our face. That, that's, that's not a smile. These are very close friends of ours. Every time a Star Wars movie comes out, we go see it opening night together. And so we have invited them to join us here to experience Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> This will be the first time any of us have ridden Rise of the Resistance, but uh, CJ and Melissa have never, in fact, even been to Galaxy's Edge. Now, I asked y'all not to watch any spoilers on YouTube. Have y'all successfully... I forgot about it, but... Not... She, she researched it. Maybe I researched some stuff. Oh. I all I know okay. is the Millennium here, and I'm trying to see this Millennium Falcon. I haven't seen okay. Millennium Falcon. So, so, make haste. We will do that in just a few minutes, but first, we're actually we we're actually going to the old Star Wars ride, Star Tours. It is right around the corner. Okay, we just got off Star Tours, not a part of Galaxy's Edge. It pre-existed it by many moons, but what did y'all think of it? Star Tours was amazing. Because I actually went on Star Tours when it first opened up way back, and it was just as awesome as I remember, dude. We're going on for the end of the day again. It's amazing! <laughs> Absolutely, it was amazing in terms of the reality, being through space. Like they went, we went through cyber. What was it hyperspeed? Hyperspace. Hyper, hyperspeed. No, what? <laughs> hyperspace. Hyperspace. But that really felt realistic. Like, yeah, it was I, awesome. I felt like I didn't have to hold on, but I actually had to hold on for it. We still have to educate like, her on Star Wars terminology. She's not as much as a nerd as I am, but we're working But it was it. really cool, though. But more importantly, get the I really behind enjoyed us, it. You see that? That's why I'm here. That's that right there. Star Tours is a motion simulator attraction. It has multiple different adventures, so it's very rewritable. Uh, you'll get a different adventure every time. But Galaxy's Edge has a newer, more interactive motion simulator, which we'll get to in a moment. So the line for Star Tours isn't nearly as long as it used to be, but it's still a lot of fun. And after Star Tours, we took a brief walk through the Star Tours gift shop. This is the place to go if you want to purchase merchandise that directly references Star Wars movies and characters. The gift shops in Galaxy's Edge are themed to represent the clothing, toys, or other goods that you would actually purchase on the fictional planet of Batuu. So over there, you shouldn't see merchandise directly mentioning the word Star Wars or the names of any specific characters, but you can find all of that over by Star Tours. So from there, we're on to Galaxy's Edge. And one thing CJ was especially excited about was seeing the Millennium Falcon in person. Yeah, the Millennium Falcon was dope. Like, growing up, my mom indoctrinated me to be a Star Wars fan. So, you know, you grow up, you watch the Millennium Falcon. But when I saw it in person, oh my God, it was amazing. Like, the level of detail that they put into it was incredible. So I actually felt like I was looking at a piece of history, even though it was only built, like, what, two years ago? Two or three years ago? So yeah, it was definitely cool to actually see it in real life. And they built it to scale. Like Disney truly left no stone unturned when they actually designed the Millennium Falcon. It was great. And after seeing the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy in person, next up was riding Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, a motion simulator that takes place in the Millennium Falcon's cockpit. Each team member has a role in the mission. A team of up to six people serve as either the pilot, the gunner, or the engineer. The team works together to help space pirate Hondo Onaka steal coaxium from the First Order. This is like a video game that you ride, and how well your team does determines how successful the mission is. So this ride is a bit different every time you experience it, based on how successful your team is. 
The queue to enter this ride snakes around the Millennium Falcon so you get some good up close views of it. Everything in there was amazing, even down to the patina, how they simulated the rust, how they simulated the age, you know, um, it basically looked like a, a dirty spaceport and that's exactly what it was. So, I mean, like the, the architecture was fully immersive. Um, when you're in there, you really do feel like you're in a spaceport and you're waiting to get on the Millennium Falcon. So they did an awesome job as far as the detail and the architecture of it all. I didn't grow up watching Star Wars. However, I can appreciate the detail that they did put into um, the buildings. Um, as CJ said, just the rust and just the fact that they made it look so old and authentic um, to what it was. I thought that was really cool. So when we actually got on the ride, Smuggler's Run, it was it was cool. I liked it. Um, I was the pilot. and. Admittedly, it was a little bit, it was underwhelming. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought I was gonna have more control of Millennium Falcon. It was all right, but I mean, all I could do was move a lever up and down. So I mean, eh, eh, I should have been a gunner. If I could go back, I would definitely be a gunner because gunners look like they had more fun. So I tried though. I mean, it was a cool ride overall, but you know, I'm eh, pilot, eh, eh. The gunner's where it's at. I was a gunner in Smuggler's Rum and it wasn't as interesting as I thought it was going to be. Just because when you think of gunner, you think of actually having like a handheld gun and just being able to really shoot. All I was doing is really just pushing a button. So it was, in my opinion, just a little underwhelming in that respect. However, Hated it. <laughs> however, I did enjoy the aspect of actually being in, you know, the Millennium Falcon. Just, yeah, just, that, was that was really cool. And just being able to actually like fly through the sky, it, that was really, you know, enjoyable. Other than the role, I wasn't a fan of the role. So, just my opinion though. One thing we really wanted to check out was Oga's Cantina, a local bar on Batu that serves some very unique drinks like the Fuzzy Tauntaun or the Jedi Mind Trick. It also has a droid DJ that plays music in the background. I didn't realize you needed reservations for this until it was too late and all the reservations were taken for the day we were visiting Galaxy's Edge. They do allow some walk-up business, but by the time we got to Batu, the few standby spots they had available for that day were already taken. Since we missed out on the cantina, we decided to walk over to the milk stand where they are serving blue and green milk. Now, while these are called milk, there's actually no dairy. They're made from rice milk and coconut milk with various fruit flavors mixed in. They have both adult versions and non-alcoholic versions. All right, we have just tried the blue milk cooler over at the milk stand. Charles, what is your review? It's interesting. It's like medicine, but it's like cotton candy and rum. I mean, if medicine tastes like this, I wouldn't be mad at it, but it's unique. I mean, I'm going to drink it though. I'm not going to waste it, but it's different. Yes, so it's $14. They also have green milk, uh, which tastes slightly different from blue. This is... Uh, the one with alcohol has tequila instead of rum. Yeah, so the, bl the blue milk with alcohol has rum, the green milk... With alcohol as tequila. So that means Jill's about to go back and get two. <laughs> they are dairy free. It's like coconut milk and. The consistency is like milk of magnesia. Yeah. That's what it yeah. was. A milk of magnesia consistency. Yeah. That's a good so. No, I really don't want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If milk of magnesia tastes like cotton candy and alcohol in it, that would be this. Now, the most stressful part of our day was our first half hour in the park. You have to get a boarding pass to ride the most popular ride in Galaxy's Edge, Rise of the Resistance. At the time of our visit, you had to get there early so that as soon as the park opened, you were already inside the park and ready on the My Disney Experience app to click a button to get a boarding pass for this ride. I was freaking out. The main reason we wanted to go on this trip was to experience this ride. We had heard so much about it and there's no guarantee you will get a boarding pass. They're very limited. We did end up getting one, but we were surrounded by unhappy, complaining people who did not get a boarding pass for this ride. So I didn't know. <laughs> I mean, I knew, but I didn't know, I guess, how 
I did, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't realize that- How involved it was. Yeah, we had to make sure that we were all in each other's groups, right? And that was a task. So that took us a little while to do because we figured it out. But I'm glad we figured that out because once we got to the park, it was crazy because everybody's looking down everybody's faces on oh their goodness. phone. Oh my goodness, it was and, like the Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, but they were all waiting to get in the queue and hope that they got on the ride. So, you know, our uh, our good friend Jack that we were um, accompanying down to Disney, he was stressed out the entire time. And I didn't understand the, the depth of why until I actually saw how the system worked. And then I could understand like, okay, I can understand why this would be stressful because of the fact that essentially leaving up the chance, but you know. It's a lottery, literally was a lottery. This is not a sponsored ad, but thankfully they had Verizon, <laughs> which is probably one of the better carriers to have as far as <laughs> yeah. service is concerned. It's true. So we got through it all. We ended up getting on the ride and the ride was amazing. Like Jack, I was about to disown him for the rest of this trip. <laughs> Because at the beginning of the ride, that's what I was gonna go. Yeah, they put you in this transport, <laughs> and you know it's cool. It's like a little 4D ride. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, like, all right, and but it's going on for a while. Like, cause you know most of the time, like you know you're in, you're out. If it's another part of the ride, we're in there for like at least three or four minutes. <laughs> so I'm sitting here like I know that this is not what he was stressed yeah. out about. You gotta and hold on, cause it's like who are you? I'm like, no, this can't be it. This can't be. It. <laughs> If this is it, I'm not talking to him the rest of this trip at all. I'm not. I refuse. I, I'm on protest. But to my surprise and shock and utter amazement, when we opened the door, well, we were on an Imperial ship and we were in the dock and they, it, they built it to scale and it was crazy. Yeah, they straight hijacked us. They open the doors and you just see like the soldiers standing there and it's like they're fully in character, like just staring you down. Get in line. And I'm just like, okay. Like, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I was like, that is, that's definitely cool. So basically then after you get locked in a the cell, they have, you know, they've simulated stormtroopers above you, which mm -hmm. again is amazing. Like the whole experience is super immersive. They, then they break you out and they use that as a guise to get you on the actual ride itself. And then that's when the madness ensues. <laughs> so now you're basically being slung around a ship and there's at-ats, like the at-ats shoot at you. Lightsabers are coming down through the ceiling. Like it's, it's insane. Like the level of technology that they've actually incorporated into this ride is stunning. And the fact that they actually built everything to scale, it's a lot. Yeah, Kylo Ren there, you know, was Flint. Flint, Flint. Michigan? No, 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 like, Flick. Oh, Flynn. Flynn. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think of it. So he was there in the corner, you know, trying to help out, trying to help us <clears throat> escape, you know, off the ship and stuff like that. I enjoyed it a lot. Like, I I think what I liked most about it was the fact that, again, just the, the technology they incorporated and the attention to detail was incredible. The boarding pass process now takes place at 7 a.m. So you can try to get a boarding pass from your hotel room. You don't have to be at the park right when it opens anymore. And plexiglass has also been added to the ride vehicles to separate people in different rows. During our visit, each party got their own ride vehicle in the main ride portion of this attraction. But that was really slowing down the line because the ride vehicles seat 12 people. If you're a party of two or three or four, you're going out with more than half the seats empty. So the plexiglass will help solve that. They'll have one group in the first few seats in front of the plexiglass and can seat another group behind the plexiglass. That should help speed up the process a little and allow more people on the ride. But even before COVID, there were not enough boarding passes for all the guests who want to ride Rise of the Resistance each day. So this is something Disney needs to figure out. The boarding pass process is probably necessary at the moment, but it's causing people to start their day with stress, followed by disappointment often, and that ain't fun. We did end up eating lunch at Docking Bay 7, which is a pretty good quick service restaurant. one shop that was selling the first order propaganda. The other shops all had really long lines because they were limiting the number of people in each shop due to COVID. That makes sense. But we did not buy theme park tickets to wait in line for shops. 
And we didn't buy the $200 lightsaber or the $100 droids that they are selling. I'm sure the husbands in particular would have loved those experiences, but we all agreed that we were doing so much on this trip that was expensive already, we decided not to add to it by purchasing these expensive souvenirs. However, I would not be surprised if both Jack and Charles end up with a lightsaber on some future trip. So at the end of this, we asked our friends what their overall opinion of Galaxy's Edge was. It, it's incredible, like you walk in and it's like, I am in Star Wars, like people are dressed up in character. Again, the architecture, everything was built. I think I was most, um, when I saw the X-Wing, I was like, okay, I knew right then and there, because at the beginning of the park from the direction we came in, there was an X-Wing that was sitting outside. And I was like, this is going to be amazing just based off of this alone. So, you know, you walk in, you see X-Wings. Um, I believe that they have a TIE fighter in the back. Um, obviously the Millennium Falcon is there. Um, I want to say they even have a Y-Wing there. Um, but they also had the land speeders. It was, all of it was just cool. Like again, growing up as a Star Wars nerd, like being able to actually see that and then be fully immersed in it is definitely a, it's an experience of a lifetime for sure. So that's our video. We had a great day at Galaxy's Edge at Disney Hollywood Studios. If you enjoyed this look at the park, then I hope you'll hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when we post new videos. And leave us a thought in the comments. Have you been to this land? What's your favorite part? And we'll see you the next time. We're traveling through.